Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Lasting Brace, and the host of Pink Tomatoes of Ordinary Television. Like the local North watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Ordinary Television. A lot to look at this week here on the podcast here. Um, obviously, the playoff matchups are now set. Uh, so we're going to break those down. I did write a ton this weekend. Of course, it is on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. When we, um, so let's, without further ado here, um, recap from um, some games week nine. I thought there were some interesting games. I mean, some shockers. Really wasn't surprised with a lot of them. I think the biggest surprise for me was Lake Orion losing 8-7 to Celine, considering the, um, the touchdown pass that, um, you know, that um, Celine had on a fourth down and 10 with about under two minutes to go in the game. Um, and it was a crazy catch by um, Lincoln Keys of Celine. It was a really crazy catch. Um, but just stunning how Lake Orion's offense really struggled in that game. Um, defense played really well in that game. I mean, so that was a stunner for me was that one. Another one was Oxford losing 28 out in Macomb, Dakota. Did not expect that to happen. Um, and then, obviously, um, Clarkston dominating Utica Eisenhower 32-3. They were up 25 nothing at one point. Um, Bowman Twins were playing really well. Clarkson's defense really played well. Um, so those were some surprises. I mean, like North Farmington knocking off Troy 35-7. Really shocked at the score there. Um, denying Troy a trip to playoffs. Ferndale getting into the postseason, winning 10-0 over Utica Ford. Um, I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, and you look at um, getting in the playoffs there. Um, so really, there's a lot of good representation around the league. Um, you know, obviously to, um, you know, to um, look at things. So really, um, you know, so a lot to really look at um, considering what happened last week. Um, so without further ado, let's break these playoff matchups down. Um, we're going to go, obviously they went like D4 to D1. Um, this one here, I'm going to, I'm going to stay that mark, um, to start off. And we're going to talk Harper Woods first. I mean, obviously when you look at what Harper Woods, they are in a really interesting region. You know, um, their district is really interesting as well. Um, just found out Harper Woods is going to play, um, Redford Union, um, they, um, on Saturday night at 7 p.m. over at, um, Redford Union. So that sets up to be a really interesting matchup because, you know, you really look at last time these two teams played, um, Harper Woods won 43-21 over Redford Union. Now, Redford Union's a different team now that they've been in years past. So when you look at Redford Union, um, obviously, you know, I'm looking at their record. They're eight and one right now. They do have a win against Allen Park, which is huge for them. Winning that one, I'm um, thirteen to seven. They knocked off, um, you know, they knocked off Thurston only seven to nothing, and that, you know, in Garden City, forty-one twenty-nine. Um, those are playoff teams as well. I mean, like their only loss was to Harper Woods, and they've won eight straight since that game. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes, considering you know Harper Woods is back healthy. Um, defense still worries me a little, but they've been playing much better as of late. Um, but when I look at the path for Harper Woods, if they can get by Redford Union, then you're setting up a date possibly with Madison Heights Lampier, um, going to Madison Heights. Now, for Harper Woods, this is probably a better case scenario for you because obviously when you look at Harper Woods, um, they're in a really interesting, um, spot of the bracket considering when you look at in that di in that district um three of the top five teams in division i mean four are in that district when you look at lampier redford union when lampier i think was the second i think was second um redford union i think was third and harper woods was fifth so it's really interesting to see how the mha divided up that district, even though it was not surprising based on the geographic location. Um, they basically, what they do is they like to put, they like to regionalize things, but they also put the district based on geography. So if you're regionalizing it, you know what I mean? To kind of look at, 
the scenario here, I mean, it could have been much different if the MHA were to regionalize this instead of basically putting, you know, I mean, but there were some they got right, but there were some of them I, I really questioned. So, you know, but in Harper Woods' case, you know, based on the location and on the map, um, you kind of had a hint that they would be going to um, Redford um, after Detroit Southeastern got beat and after Detroit Henry Ford got beat. So both those teams end up getting beat, which basically sent Harper Woods to Redford Union. So, you know, so really interesting. The reason why Harper Woods sits at 6-3 and three right now is because of the games they played. I mean, the losses, they lost to some really good teams. I mean, they lost to Oxford. They lost to Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, lost to Groves. I mean, those are three losses this year. So, so really, when I look at it here, it just really is the, the case here is for Harper Woods is they're going to have to really, um, you know, win games on the road. And they've proven they can, they have won games on the road. Um, you know, they've won at hostile places. They won at Rochester. Um, they won at, um, you know, which is not an easy place to play. Um, that, I think, is their biggest road win of the year. So now they're going into Redford um, for a Saturday night game. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one plays out between those two. Um, on a Saturday night, um, the other match should be a met and considering the winner of the Lampier Dearborn Heights Robichaud game or divine child game is going to basically get a good look at you, um, playing on that Saturday night. So if you're coach Roy Azarowski, you know, I don't know if you want to see Harper Woods, but you know, they did have a good win against Berkeley. They did play some OA teams. Um, but Harper Woods is a different animal. I mean, obviously you have that championship pedigree being a de de defending division four state champions, but for Harper Woods, I mean, the path for them, it is tougher when you look at, of course, that district, you know, obviously having to go through Redford, um, union and then having to play most likely be Mass Lights Lampier. Um, and then on the other side, you're probably looking at, which I think is really favorable for them. Maybe Marysville, um, you know, I think that's a possibility there. They could play Macomb Lutheran North, um, which I think both, I mean, Macomb Lutheran North's coming off in a, an overtime win over Clarkson Everett in the Catholic League, um, in the Catholic League um, tournament um, over there. So it'll be really interesting to see if, like, if Harper Woods were to get by in that district, then probably having to see either a Matt, a Macomb Lutheran North or a um or a um Marysville. Of course, Marysville's a team that, you know, I'll be curious to see how this one goes. I think Harper Woods would host considering, you know, if that were the con scenario here. So so I think honestly when I look at that is it's gonna come down to for Harper Woods is you gotta win two tough games on the road. You're taking on a team. You're rematching. And I know the MHA's got a lot of rematches. Um, and this is one of them. Obviously, as I mentioned, the 43-21 game. Um, and then the winner's taking on near Madison Lights Lampier or Dearborn Heights um, or Dearborn Divine Child. Um, so that will be really interesting to see how um, how that will go over there. Um, so that should be really interesting over at um, – that should be really, really interesting to see how that one goes. But um, – but the good news, if you're um, but the good news is, you know, and then whoever wins that could see Chelsea, um, or Hazlitt in the um, in the um, in the um, state semifinals. So that could be really interesting. The road for Harper Woods is a little bit tougher this year, a little more challenging this year, um, for them. So we'll see how that goes out for Coach Rob Oden and his team, but. Really, there's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting road for um for Harper Woods if they want to get back to Ford Field. Considering you know there are some teams that could give them some problems. I mean, obviously, you know, in the district, Redford Union, you got Madison Heights, Lampier. Those two could give them problems. Regional, if they get there, you got Macomb Lutheran North and um um and then Marysville. They could they could be they could give them problems as well. And then Chelsea in the state semifinal. So. It's not an easy path for Harper Woods um, this time around, um, considering, you know, last season, you know, they had a really tough path. I mean, they went north, um, knocked off Virgil Croswell-Lex team, 
Um, and then they had to go and knock off um, Carlton Airport in the regional. And then they had to beat Goodrich, which that was an incredible game um, there. For, so a lot of challenges for Coach Rob Oden and his team um, in that in that scenario. So, you know, so it's not an easy path for Harperwood. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and in the brackets, in the, in the brackets, you know, when I wrote down there, I had the right matchups just in the wrong region. So really that, and I was a little disappointed about that, but at least, you know, I got about 50% of it right. So, you know, so it is what it is, but kind of if, you know, if I had a Harper, Harper Woods fans were asking me, if they asked me about if they were going to get a home game and all that, I, I would have been really brutal honest with them. And I said, and I said, look, you know, look at the map. And I said, you know, Harper Woods is most likely going to have to go on the road despite having the fifth most playoff points in Division Four. you know, which I, I really feel is a shame, but that's how the map was drawn out. And, you know, they're geographically closer to Redford. And, they're, and of course, you know, Madison Heights is right is right to where they're north. So, you know, but then Harper Woods, it's going to help Harper Woods if they got familiarity with Oakland County because they're in the OAA. And the OAA, I think, is one of the toughest conferences and I think they're tougher than the MAC, you know. And I think Harperwood's played more tough competition um, when it comes to the, um, you know, into that level. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how how that how that would go, especially for Harper Woods, where they're going to be at. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Let's go to Division Three now. I mean, Avondale got a really, really, really top district here. I mean, you look at a course, you know, it's kind of expected, you know what I mean, that, I mean, like, it was earlier than I thought Avenel was going to probably play Fenton, um, but then, you know, you kind of look at that scenario and say, wait a minute here, maybe there could be a chance they could get a number one seed, maybe have to play Redford Thurston or Garden City, but then you have a team named Wall Lake Western who's in there, and, you know, you kind of think, oh boy, you know what I mean? I mean, Avenel played them last year. They played them last year, and it was just not a um, it was not a pretty sight for Coach Bob Meyer and the Yellow Jackets. Um, falling to um Wild Lake um Western, and now they could see that that same team again, same scenario, same fate. You know, you know. But Avondale, you know, you look at them. They got an interesting matchup against Redford um Thurston. Um, Thurston's an interesting team. They they got. I mean, they're seven and two for a reason. Um, their best wins was, I mean, their best wins, Garden City, they knocked them out 12-7, um, and then they they have a very tough loss to, um, Redford Union, where they only lost 7 to nothing, um, and then they lost to Dearborn Heights, Robichaw, 14-13, so they lost, both their games they lost were by two points. <laughs> that kind of tells you something about Redford Thurston, that kind of tells you something about the Eagles, is, they're a good team. They're a very good team. And Avenel's going to have to really play. They're going to have to really work, and they're going to have to really play if they want to pull this off. Because it's pretty simple to what I see with Avenel is, you know, they run that wing T. <laughs> Start off the year 0-2. Um, lost a tough one to Cedar Springs. Then lost to Seahome. Cedar Springs, um, they are in Division Three. They're in a different district. Um, Cedar Springs is playing. Um, I think they're yeah they're at Lowell. So fun matchup there. Are two teams that run the wing T, and that's on grass too. So that should be really interesting. <laughs> that should be really interesting. I mean, considering. That winner might have to see Petoskey. And Petoskey, I think, is the best team right now on that side of the bracket. <laughs> now, do I think that, um, do I think they'll get out of there? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> whoever wins that district, you know, most likely, I think Petoskey has to be favored in that. They have to be. So. When I look at Avondale, Avondale, I their path, their Redford Thurston's a tough team. They're going to be a very tough team. 
for them. Avenel's got a very experienced defense. That should help him. This could be a low-scoring game between those two teams. This could be a really low-scoring game. Um, But then, you know, whoever wins that game most likely is going to see Wall Lake Western. And Western right now is a team that's riding a lot of confidence. <laughs> They're going to beat, they'll beat you by 40. Or they'll beat you close. I mean, Wall Lake Western, this team does have a history of playing to the level of their competition. They, this team does have a history. So, talking to Sean Cotter. And basically, he called Avondale. Like, they played Avondale, an easy win. And I'm not buying that at all. I'm really not. Because Avondale, to me, they can surprise some people. They could really surprise some people. They can make some noise. Um, and I and I think for if Avondale were to play Western again, I don't think it's going to be an easy game for Western. I really don't. I'd be shocked if it was, but I really don't think it will be because of Avondale's wing T and because Avondale defensively can give Wall Lake Western problems. Now, I'll be, yeah, Wild Lake Western's got athletes. Don't get me wrong. But I just think Western will have problems. I think Western will have problems if they play Avenue. Now, Redford Thurston's no pushover. Really not. When you lose both your games by a combined two points, that tells me something right there. You're a heck of a team. I'll actually take that back. Eight points. They lost both games by eight points. By combined eight points. So that kind of tells me right there, they're a very good team. They are a really good team. So Avenue will have their hands full. Whoever wins that district is going to have to go through Mason. Um, now, considering Wall Lake Western did knock off Mason. So that really says something there about them. Um, so when I look at how that looks, you know, if I'd say if Avenel upset Western and then have to play Mason, um, that could very well happen. But it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Really would be. So that'll be very interesting to see how um that'll play out. So we'll see. We will see. But for Avondale, really tough path. In Division Two, um, on no, Division Three, um, basically, you got Redford Thurston is a tough matchup for you, and then you're gonna have to play. Uh, most likely, if you win that game, you're staring at Wall Lake Western right in the face. So, tough draw for Avondale. Really tough draw for them. So I kind of feel like, honestly, the OA basically got sentenced. You know what I mean? Now, I'll talk Division One in a minute, but I kind of feel like the MHA really sentenced the OA. I mean, they really sentenced the conference as a whole because, you know, obviously, you know, Division One, you got two, you got two red teams playing each other. You got one going to Tennessee County. Um, you got one likely possibly having to see um. Um, know why Detroit Catholic Central in the um district final. And then, you know, you got one that can see Warren DSL in the regional. Um another, you know, and then and then you look at um and we'll talk we'll talk more about these, but I really kind of feel like honestly, in my own opinion, the OA really got really got screwed here by the um MHA when it comes to the playoff matchups. Um so you know, so I'm kind of upset about it, about about the scenario, how, um, you know, how the matchups came. So I'm trying to break everything down here um, as best I can. But I kind of honestly, and this is my own honest opinion, I kind of feel like all 13 teams in the way really got, like, sentenced in some sort of way. So, you know, I get it. You know what I mean? You got to go through Ford Field. To get the Ford Field, you got to go through hard work, dedication, all that. But kind of feel that way. So that's kind of my rant with the MHA. 
I would love to talk to Mark Yo about this. Really would like to talk to him about this. Because I think honestly here, when you look at divisions and you look at conferences, you kind of really you kind of really want to test play somebody new in the playoffs. You really want to play somebody new. I mean, you know, and I know we have some of those, but some of them, you know, having rematches, you know, you've already played them once. You know what I mean? I mean, like, you know, if you have a rematch, it kind of benefits the loser of the week one ma- of the, um, of the of the game against the winner because you know now you're gonna look at and I'll and I'll talk more in depth about it. I mean like you know I mentioned it in the um Harper Woods um Redford Union matchup. And of course you know that matchup I think would benefit Redford Union because Harper Woods beat him. You know now obviously it took two days, but you know Redford Union you know they got the film from that game. They know what they got to do better. They know. You know what I mean? What they got to fix. So I think kind of when you look at these rematches, it benefits, I think, the loser of the the regular season game gets ready for the postseason game. I mean, it's always hard to be a team twice. It really is. It really is going to be. And I think for Harper Woods in that game against the Redford Union, I should have said this earlier, um, it's going to be really hard to beat a team twice, and especially for them having to go to Redford. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Now let's go to Division Two. I mean, Division Two, as I mentioned here, um, North Farmington winning the blue after knocking out Troy 35-7. <laughs> you want to know what the reward is? You really want to know what the reward is? Okay. Let's go send let's go send Orchard Lake St. Mary's to Rod Holland Field. How do you explain that? How can you explain that? Considering when you look at the Raiders, um, the year they had after missing the playoffs, um, I think three years straight years, win the division. And now you reward, and now they get rewarded by bringing an Orchard Lake St. Mary's in there. How? How? How can you explain that? If you're a Raider fan or a Raider or a Raider supporter, even if you're Todd Negotian, you would just say like, "Why? Why would you give us?" A proven Catholic League powerhouse in the first round. I mean, come on. I mean, I know that Coach John Hurston is going to say bring it and all that. You know what I mean? And um, bring it on and all that. But you know, they got a very and they got an experienced coaching staff, obviously, with the um, Harrison connection. But playing Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the first round—that is a very very difficult matchup. That is a difficult matchup for them because you look at the scenario how that is, the geographic map, you know, I kind of made some sense to send Orchard Lake St. Mary's south in an according to this map, they would send them they would have he would have sent them west to East Lansing. Now, I know Milford might have a beef with this, and I'll bring them up in a minute here. Um, but for North Farmington, I feel really, really bad for them. I, I really do. Now, I'm not sure if Farmington TB10, uh, Rich Kincaid over there, he could do that game. He could do that game over there, Farmington TB10. He could do that game. It's at Ron Holland Field. I mean, he could do it. But when I look at the matchup, it's a terrible matchup for North Farmington because they don't really have a true passing game. They don't really have. I mean, they relied a lot on two guys all year long, Terrence James and Duke Blanche. I mean, and I'm not knocking on their 
on their team at all. But I'm just saying, you know, the play of Terrence James has really been a, been been huge for this team. The play of Duke Blanche has been really instrumental for this team. But to play Orchard Lakes, to, to give them Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the first round? Man. Man. That is awful. That's just awful. But now they got to play them. The other side of things, you know, you look at Farmington. Farmington back in the playoffs at three, um, Hard fought um, 34-22 against Dearborn Heights Crestwood. They get to go play White Lake Lakeland. Now, this is really interesting because I know there was some talk about Farmington playing Livonia Frank Franklin, but they got shipped south, um, which is interesting. Now, farming, now, Lakeland lost to Milford. They lost to Milford, but I kind of feel like Lakeland got the benefit of the doubt here because Milford got sentenced to go play Dexter in the first round. <laughs> and I'm looking, if you're Milford, you won the matchup with your arch rival. Now your reward is you get to go play Dexter in the first round. Tell me how fair is that? Tell me how fair that is. For Farmington, you know, taking on Lakeland, it's a good matchup for Farmington. I mean, Lakeland's got a heck of a running back. And I know that, um, I know that, um, Bob Chiazza used to coach at North Farmington. And then... He was at Waterford Kettering. It's kind of the same thing with Nick Merlo, who's the offensive coordinator at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. He knows North Farmington quite well, you know, with his days when he was at Stony Creek. So, but back to Farmington and Lakeland. It's an interesting matchup because you look at these two teams used to be rivals. In the old um, KVC days, they used to be rivals. And, you know, you look at what Lakeland's done. Lakeland's not had the best of years in the Lakes Valley, but they're in the playoffs. And they got a home game out of this. Farmington, first time back in the playoffs. You just got your quarterback, Julian Johnson, back. Everything's starting to settle in the form. The key for Farmington against Lakeland is going to be the passing game. Because if Farmington cannot throw the ball, they're in trouble. So we'll see how that one goes. But in that region, in that district side, and then whoever wins that, and then whoever wins that district, Whoever wins that district is going to have to likely see, possibly, is going to have to see either, and they're going to have to see either, I'm looking at it right now here, so, but I, they're possibly going to have to see in the regional either, and it looks manageable over there too, because it looks really manageable, because I'm not sold on Carlson. I'm not sold on Allen Park. Not sold on either team. I mean, whoever wins that district has a great chance to, I think, get to the um I think to get to the region. I think it got a great chance. I the state summit. It got a great chance. But for North Farmington and Farmington, that is a extremely difficult. Matchup for you. For North especially. Having to take on Orchard Lake St. Mary's at Ron Holland Field. That is a really, really difficult matchup. And we'll see what happens. Let's go to Division. Let's go to Region 4 here. Um, District 1. Um, 
Ferndale and Groves. Ferndale back in the playoffs the first time since the pandemic era. Um, taking on Groves, who's been undefeated. Ferndale, as I mentioned, got in the playoffs, winning 10 0 over um, Utica Ford um, last week. Groves, no issue, 35 0 over Seaholm. Ferndale's got an experienced team. They do. But they don't have playoff experience, which is a disadvantage for them. Groves, on the other hand, has a ton of playoff experience. They have a ton of it. <laughs> Considering they're motivated after what happened to them last year, where they lost in the first round to Seahawk. So when I look at Groves' pass, you know, and I think, you know, Groves obviously going 9-0, uh, but really haven't been tested since West Bloomfield. So it kind of really tells me something about where this team's at. And especially down the road where they could have some problems maybe in the regional final if they get there. Because you look at that in District 2 and the, re and the and that region, it is loaded. Because you look at Roseville, who just knocked off West Bloomfield in a classic 49-48 overtime game. You look at Grove Point South is undefeated. Then on the other side, you have Warren either side of the Proven Catholic League power. And then there's Port Huron Northern. Obviously, when you look at them playing their games at Memorial Stadium in Port Huron. So, you, you really look at it here as, you know, Region 4 is loaded. It is tough. It is difficult. When you look at, when you, and then when you look at the matchups, you look at for Ferndale, this is very difficult for you going against Groves. Really difficult for Coach Eric Royal. Matching up against Coach Brendan Flaherty. Considering the year that they had, um, you know, they've had a nice year. Now you get to take on undefeated Groves. That's, that's kind of like their reward, you know, for them. And obviously you look at Ferndale, they're saying, well, why are we in D2 and not D3? The reason why you're in D2 is because of the co-op with Ferndale University. And they count both the enrollments of Ferndale and Ferndale U. So that's why Ferndale's in Division 2. So, tough matchup for them against Groves. Despite them being in the gold, um, Groves is in the white. Um, two teams do have some familiarity with one another. Um, so, we'll see how that one goes. In that scenario there. And the other matchup we got Warren Mott taking on Seaholm. Warren Mott seven and two. Seaholm at six and three. Seaholm has the home game because of playoff points. Seaholm started off the year six and oh. But then they haven't been the same since. Lost they have not been the same since the um the gamble that coach Jim D. Wall took in that um North Farmington game. I'm still trying to figure that out. But Ever since that call, it's been they've been 0 and 3 since. I mean, they have only scored three points. They have been outscored in their last two games. I mean, they have been outscored 69 to 3 in the last two weeks. That's bad. That is bad. You know that that. That's bad. And then you look at a team like Warren Mott, who's coming in with a lot of momentum. I mean, their best win, they beat Warren Fitzgerald week one, 38-22. Knocked off four, 23-0. Um, their losses were to both poor Huron schools. They lost 20 not in the poor Huron Northern. And then they lost 47-35 to um. Poor Huron. And they have been known to score a ton of points. I mean, they put up 38 against Warren Fitzgerald, 42 against Lakeshore, 35 against Port Huron, 23 against Ford, 49 against Frazier, 35 against Warren Cousineau, um, 49 against Gross Point North, and 33 against Warren Woods Tower. So they can score. They can score in bunches. For um, Seaholm, they run the Veer. 
They want to slow you down. Defensively, this team's not been very good the last two weeks. They have not been very good. They, they have not been themselves since that North since that fourth quarter disaster um, against North Farm. They really have not been themselves. So if you're Seaholm, you gotta use this game to you gotta use this game to really fix yourself. Because if you don't, you're done. That's really what the bottom line is. I mean, they have it in them. They've knocked off Division I teams already. You knock off Troy. You knock off Troy Athens. You knock off Bloomfield Hills. Now, albeit those three teams, you know, I mean, and Troy Athens, Bloomfield Hills really struggled this year. Troy lost um, week nine. So, really, when you look at it, it's just, It'll be interesting to see, but for Seaholm, they got to use this game as a get-right game because if they don't, they're looking at going home. And I know Seaholm wants another shot at Groves, but it's going to be a tall order in that matchup. It's going to really be a tall order because if you look at that matchup, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, but Seaholm's got to beat Warren Mott first before they start thinking Groves. For Groves' sake, you win that district, you're basically focused on them. Then you got a really tall order in the regional. But the good news for Groves is who's ever in D4, they come to Beverly Hills. Oh, no, I take that back. They would go to Groves Point South, and then they would, um, other than that, they would host everyone else with the exception of Gross Point South. So that would be really interesting to see because for Groves right now, that would be the challenge for them is, you know, trying to win that district, you know, but like I said, Gross Point South, they got their own challenges. They got Roseville, which is a tough matchup, and then they got, and if they win that, then they're looking at Warren D. The South staring them right in the face. So, we'll see how that goes. But Division 2, when I look at it right now, um, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Now on to Division 1. Kind of, really, when you look at this division here, um, you kind of really, you know, the Howell-Belleville game really, I know a lot of people are, Surprised that Bell Bell lost to Howell. I'll admit I was not surprised that Howell beat Bell Bell. I really was not surprised. Because when I look at Belleville, Belleville, obviously Bryce Underwood is the real deal. Obviously that. But when you look at Belleville defensively, they're not good. They're not that good defensively. I mean, and I've been, and I've seen it a long time. You know, I've known football a long time. I don't think the the um, KLA East is as good as people think it get as it is. I don't think they're as good. I don't think they're that good. And Belva ran run shot in that division. The KLA West was brutal this year. It was tough. When you look at teams like Howell, Brighton, Heartland, Northville, Nova, I mean, Lavonia Stevens, I mean, like, <laughs> my goodness. Um, that is not an easy division. And for Howell to go in there and beat Belleville the way they did, to get a touchdown late to win it, that says something a lot about that team. And Howell is rewarded with the number one overall seed in the playoffs. They are rewarded with that. Interesting district, though, for them, though. They got to play um, Kalamazoo Central first, the Maroon Giants. Um, then, if they win that, a rematch with Brighton. Um, and then a possible rematch with either Hudsonville or Rockford. So, tall order for them in that one. Really tall order for them. Um, and then, let's look at the OA, with the OA teams here. 
we're gonna start off with we're gonna start off with region number um we're gonna start off with region um we're gonna start off with region number um with region two with region um with region three. We're gonna start off with that. Because this is there's some storylines here. Um Lavonia Stevenson takes on no white Detroit Catholic Central. Um and then the matchup we're previewing here is West Bloomfield at Novi. Um, if you're Zach Hilbers, I absolutely love this matchup. Novi don't impress me. They really don't. I mean, you had a very tough emotional 49-48 loss in overtime to um, Roseville last week. Novi, they're solid, but they don't wow me. Because Novi had a rough loss to Northville, and they just got beat um, by Dearborn. They just got beat by them. so North. So, so so Novi is so Novi is um reeling a little bit. I do not know how Novi is going to cover Elijah Jackson and Cameron Fox. I I really don't know. And then good luck with Bo Jackson, and good luck with Josh Tate. And not to mention, they got a big offensive line. The defense for West Bloomfield is pretty much the one that maybe their Achilles heel. But I don't trust Novi's offense in this game. I just don't trust their offense. So I talked to Kyler Key at the Civic Center TV. Um, I, I I said to him, "It's a better match for you if you play Novi. If you played CC in the first round, you're gonna have a problem." And I really look at this match for West Bloomfield. It's a great match for them. Taking on Novi. Now, if they knock off Novi, which I think they will, now you got to deal with CC. And CC has been really good all year. They've been really good. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. I mean, their defense is solid. I mean... My goodness. It'll be really interesting to see if I will be that should be an interesting game between West Bloomfield and CC. Now, albeit West Bloomfield is a different team than Harper Woods, who played CC earlier in the year. West Bloomfield is a totally different team. Their defense has to grow up in that game. Like they did against Seahaw. I mean, they played really well against Seahome. Other than that, they've really, also A&T, but other than that, they really have struggled, really have, all year long. So for West Bloomfield, they can knock Novi off. Then the attention, the focus has to be to CC. Because, now nah, do I, if West Bloomfield, West Bloomfield, do I think it can knock off CC? I think they can. I think they can. Will it be easy? No. It'll be really challenging. But they do have a chance against CC if they do play. They do have a chance. But for West Bloomfield, it comes down to discipline. It comes down to Bo Jackson's accuracy. It comes down to Jamal Shakespeare. You know, Josh Tate. And of course you have the um and of course you have Elijah Durham and um Cameron Flowers. They all play well. West Bloom has got a chance. They all play well, they got a chance. And then somebody in that defense has to show up. If their defense shows up in that game, I think they're gonna be fine. I really do. So tall task for West Bloomfield though, in that district. Really tall task for them. So, we'll see how that one goes. We we shall see how that one goes. Now we go to Region 2, District 1. Got Grand Blank taking on Lapeer. Um, but the matchup we're talking about is Oxford and Davis. These are two wrestling powerhouses. These are two teams that are physical, are tough, 
and they know how to play. This is a tough match for Oxford because of the depth and also the fact that Davidson has a really good passing game. They got a CMU commit on that roster. Their quarterback has shown a lot of promise. I know the folks at, D at DTV over there in Davidson, it's going to be interesting to see how they announce this game, considering it's a playoff game. Um, I did hear their broadcasts. Not impressed. Really wasn't. But now you're in a playoff game. You're at that neutral. You have to be. So when I look at the matchup, I think coming into this matchup, it's going to be, can Oxford score against Davison? Davison is human defensively. Ask Graham Blank that question. If Luke Johnson has a big game, if he has a big game here, it would not surprise me if Oxford goes into Davison and beats Davison. It would not surprise me. It's a tall order. It's a tall task. But when I look at the matchup, it's going to be interesting. Davison brings a dang they're a dangerous team. And I know a lot of people have Davison going far. I'm not buying Davison. I'm really not. They've ha they have some losses there. The LaSalle game, they lost that one. Then they lost the um and then the Grand Blank game. Grand Blank plays Lapeer in the first round. Grand Blank's coming off a really tough 14-13 loss to Romeo. And if that were the case, who if Grand Blank knocks off Lapeer, then the winner of Davison and Oxford goes up to they go up to um Grand Blank. For Oxford, Dean Rice has to play well. Luke Johnson has to play well. And I know that game's going to be on DTV. Just a little concerned about the announcing over there. Really, con little, really concerned about that. It's going to be interesting to see how that matchup goes. Whoever style wins. Whoever style shows up, wins. That's really what it is in that matchup. That's really what it is. I think Oxford's got a chance in this game. Because they can slow Davison down. Now, Davison will want to play that game, too. The Grand Blank game really is the blueprint if you want to study... Davis. That's really what it is. So, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. But, for Oxford, this is a really difficult matchup. Having to take the travel up M24 to I-69 to near M15 to play Davis. I honestly thought this would have been where Clarkston went because they sent it around Grand Blank. But looking at the regional components to all this, it made sense. It made sense. And we don't know where Oxford's mindset is after what happened last week against Macomb, Dakota, when they lost 28 nothing. We really don't know. So. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. But it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes, considering now you're in the playoffs. Games on DTV over there, Davidson Television. 
just see how things are going to go in that game. We'll see how that goes. And then let's look at Region um three, Region Two, District Two. Start with Adams and Stony. Rematch, twenty-one thirteen of Adams win over Stony. Really good game over there. Um, I'll tell you what. Coach Rick Powell's done a really nice job of that program. You look at early in the year, it was they knocked off Warren Cousineau. Rough loss against Lake Orion. Tough loss to um, Harper Woods. I think that loss to Harper Woods really turned their season around. And then they knocked off Rochester in an overtime game. Then they started getting on a roll. They had that tough loss to Adams, but they started getting on a roll. You get those playoff points rolling. Look out. And I think Stony Creek's a team that's coming in, playing with nothing to lose and everything to gain. The pressure is on Adams. Adams is the number one seed in the district. They're the number one seed in the region. So when you look at Adams, you know, obviously they came off an emotional 31-28 overtime win against New Baltimore Anchor Bay. So when I look at Adams, you know, there's a lot of questions with Adams. I mean, you got Mateo Humbert. You got Lashley Tillerson. Your offensive and defensive lines are getting better. You run the veer. You run the option. So there's a lot to like with Adams. But there's that danger. I mean, like, um, I mean, Hunter Ferris has done a really nice job for that team. He's done a really nice job. Um, taking over for Ryland Waters. There's some questions surrounding Waters, though. But I don't know the injury report. Will he be willing to go? I don't know. Stony Creek, you have Sam Fogler there. You have, you have your offensive line back, Peyton Rumber, Spencer Beckman. Your defense has gotten better. I really like, I really like, um, I really like Zazula over there on the second. I really like what he's been doing. Stony Creek's a team that's riding with confidence right now. They really are. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how that one goes. But it's a rematch, and it's always hard to be a team twice in one year. So, we'll see how this one goes. We shall see. And then our last matchup is Lake Orion and Clarkston. When I looked at the map, I was absolute. if you're a Lake Orion fan, you're dreading this matchup. For several reasons. You look at the history. When you look. It is hard to beat a team twice in one year. I was on the 05 team. When. We beat Clarkson twice. It's not an easy thing at all. It really is not. And then Clarkson did it. In um, 2000 and, um, 2009. And in um, 2018, when they beat Lake Orion twice. Clarkston is coming off a 32-3 win against Utica Eisenhower. Lake Orion is reeling, losing 8-7 to Celine last week. Clarkston's motivated. Losing 20-13 in Week 7. Very controversial call late in that game. Very controversial call. And I know Clarkston fans and players, coaches, are looking forward to this game at Lake Orion. This game, be on o this game will also be on ON TV and Dragon Broadcasting. This should be a really interesting matchup. As a, it's similar to Adams and Stony Creek. They know each other extremely well. Clarkson obviously with the Bowman Twins. 
Lake Orion, of course, Jan Burrell's really stepped up. Quarterback matchup, Alex Wachensko at Clarkson, T.R. Hill at Lake Orion. Wide receiving game could be the key to this whole matchup. I mean, Lake Orion, obviously, with Ryan Lushow. Clarkston, we know they got a great set of proven receivers. If this comes down to a game in the trenches, I would take Lake Orion this one. But if it's a game of skill, I got to go Clarkson. Defensively right now, you know, both defenses have been playing extremely well. So, this should be a really interesting matchup. It'll be really, really interesting to see how this goes. Considering, you know, Clarkson's going to be motivated. They're going to be ready to go. I don't know where Lake Orion's mindset's at after the loss of Celine. I mean, there's some questions when you look at the Dragons. There were some questions surrounding Coach Chris Bell's team. There is questions. Is where are they at mentally? Is, that's the question. Where are they at mentally? So, and I know it's hard to beat a team twice in one year. It really is. And, we, and Lake Orion fans also remember what happened last year. Clarkson ended up winning 38-37 in the district final. Now, Lake Orion struggled in that game to finish. Now, albeit also, there was some controversy in that game as well. You know, and Lake Orion knows Coach Justin Pantar is going to do some trick plays. They know it. So, it'll be really interesting to see how this matchup is going to be between the Dragons and the Wolves. Um, Clarkston, you know, I, I think playing a team a second time around benefits the loser of that matchup. And there are some rematches. There are some rematches. So, we'll see how this one goes. We'll see how this one goes. Picks for the playoffs this week here, obviously. Um, week... With Division 4, uh, for Week 10, Division 4, I'm taking Harper Woods over Redford Union. Your hard-fought game on a Saturday night. Um, I've got Avenel over Redford Thurston. Um, Division 2, I'm taking Orchard Lake St. Mary's over North Farmington. I am taking um, Lakeland over Farmington. And then... You got Ferndale taking on um, Groves. I got Groves over Ferndale on that one. I got Seaholm over Warren Mott. Um, setting up a rematch to Battle of Birmingham next week. Um, and then Division One. Um, I got West Bloomfield over Novi. I think West Bloomfield really um has a balancing attack here. Um, in that one. I'm gonna. I'm, I've been back and forth between Oxford and Davison here in this one here. Oxford's not afraid to go into somebody else's place and win. Um, they've done that before in the past. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you look at, you know, the um 2021 game. I call that the Tate Mirror game against Clarkston, where nobody gave Oxford a chance to go into Clarkston, and Oxford just totally. Tore Clark's to shreds in that game. Do I do I think it could happen here? I think it could. I think and I, I think Oxford's played a more tougher schedule than Davison. Um, you know, I'll be yeah. Davison got played De La Salle. They played Grand Blank. They played Lapeer. But Oxford's played a really tough schedule here, so it would not surprise me if Oxford goes into Davison and beats. And beats the Cardinals. So I've got Oxford over Davison in an upset in that one. And then you got Stony Creek versus Adams. Um, this should be a really good game here. Um, don't be surprised if the game is tied at 21. I think Adams survives, kicks a winning field goal here. 
survives that one against a really good Stony Creek team. And then Lake Orion and Clarkston, I got a similar feeling of the um of the game that of 05. Um I know Clarkston um is motivated to have a deep playoff run, but so is Lake Orion. I got Lake Orion in this one barely. <laughs> I got Lake Orion in this one barely. They remember what happened last year. Um they know how bad the senior the seniors of last year felt. I think they get back this time around and retain the trophy. Um so I got the Dragons winning that one against the Wolves, so but it'll be a really, really tight game. I think both Bowman Twins have a big game. Excuse me. But it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. So we'll see what happens. All right, man. We wish you the best of luck heading in the playoffs. Um, plus we got volleyball playoffs. We got soccer. Oxford and um Adams both in the um in soccer. Of course, Oxford takes on Byron Center. Um, Adams they take on Celine. Um. So that was, those are going to be really interesting matchups. Um, they could play Saturday, so it'll be really interesting to see how, if if that were the case, if on Wednesday night, if those two teams play. Keep an eye on the blog at segment4650.blogspot.com in that matchup. All right, everybody, we'll sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Everybody take care and see you then. God bless you. God bless you.